Welcome everyone, this is Sean with MTG808 Jr. and today we're going to be taking a look at the top four decks from our most recent used standard popper tournament held on August 19th over at Westside Comics. However, before we jump into that, just want to give everybody a heads up on uh, what's coming down the pike um, on our tournament schedule. So, of course, we are going to be running, hopefully, two scholarship tournaments this school year, one in December and then one in May, which is pending. Um, we will for sure run the one in May, assuming that we hit our $400 a month um, threshold on our Patreon account, but I'm pretty confident that we will hit that, so right now we're we're planning on running the two scholarship tournaments, um, so, you know, keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, there will be, of course, uh, $500 in scholarship going to our first place finisher and $200 in scholarship going to our second place finisher, so, uh, you know, Hope you that you're getting all stoked for that. Um, and then, of course, we do have our regularly scheduled uh, Youth Standard Popper uh, tournaments. Uh, we're trying to run about two a month. We might be running um, more than that uh, per month. But our next one is scheduled for September 8th over at The Planet, uh, which has a new location. It's over on Young Street. So, uh, you know, check out their webpage if you are not sure exactly where their new location is before going. Um, but... That will be on September 8th. It's a Saturday. And then the next weekend, uh, September 16th, uh, we're going to be over at Westside Comics again. Again, for you, Standard Popper. Um, Guilds of Ravnica pre-release is the next weekend after that. So once Guilds of Ravnica comes out, the format will be rotating. Um, so that means Kaladesh, Aether Revolt, Amonkhet, and Hour of Devastation will no longer be legal. And Guilds of Ravnica will be legal um, starting on October 5th. Oh, here we are. October 5th is when Guilds of Ravnica comes out, so there's some teaser art for you, the Guilds of Ravnica. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, we have two tournaments left with the current standard format, and then rotation happens October 5th, and our next tournament will be October 21st. So, uh, you know, get excited for that. Alright, moving on to our top four or I guess this is our top two. We had Jacob coming in first place. This is his second tournament in a row that he's won with us. Um, he was playing Mono White Aggro. He beat Sydney um, playing Blue Red Artificers in the finals. So congratulations to both of them for making the finals. Jacob, of course, is a student over at Coppola Middle School. They have a really awesome magic club there. And Sydney is a fifth grader over at August Aaron's Elementary School. Um, they have a, a really strong magic club there as well. So congratulations to both of them. Uh, rounding out the top four, uh, we had Jeffrey, who was a member of the Moanalua Middle School Magic Club. He is now a freshman up at Moanalua um, High School. Uh, they don't have a magic club up there yet, but I think it's only a matter of time. And then um, Edward rounded out the top four, who he is also a fifth grader over at August Aaron's, a part of their magic club there. So shout out to all of the magic club advisors for, you know, supporting the students, helping them to prepare for these tournaments. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without the help of uh, our magic club advisors. So, uh but we want to take a look at their decks. So Jacob, as we said, was playing Mono White Aggro, Sydney Blue Red Artificers, Jeffrey was playing Blue Black Control, and Edward here was playing Mono Green Aggro. So we will have links to all of these uh, text versions of the decks in the description, so check them out. But for now, we're going to be taking a look down here. Uh, we'll start with fourth place. So uh, Edward... Uh, was playing Mono Green Aggro. He's been playing this deck for a couple tournaments now. I think Mr. Ulip uh, built him this deck. So he is basically playing a really strong green curve. He's got some pump spells here to help push his creatures through combat. Um, some vehicles to have some hard-to-answer threats. Renegade Freighter is, of course, a beating. And uh, he's playing... Um, the curve that he decided to play, especially in the 3-drop slot and the 4-drop slot here, are creatures that um, make 1-1 one, one creatures when they come into play. So, um, uh, against the control decks, you know, you play a creature and it splits into 2 creatures, it's harder for them to answer. They have to use 2 removal spells or have a counter spell ready. Um, so, I, I think that's part of the reason why he chose to play these particular creatures. Also, um, in the creature mirrors, the aggro mirrors, having multiple bodies means that you can race and potentially chump block or just having more creatures to crew your vehicles so that's kind of um the approach that this deck is taking uh just some constructive criticism um 
I, I think that this deck could uh, make great use out of Frilled Sandwalla. We saw this uh, being the all-star of blue-green aggro played by Tegan last school year. Um, one mana, one, one. You can pay two at instant speed to give it plus two, plus two until end of turn, and you can only do that once each turn. But just uh, having the ability to threaten the pump uh, means that this guy is going to be getting in a lot of damage. Um, but... You know, I'm I'm not sure what I would recommend Edward cut. Maybe, you know, he is playing 24 lands, which is a lot for an aggro deck, so maybe he could trim a land or two. And then Bitterblade Warrior is probably his uh, worst 2-drop, and Yavimaya Shepherd is probably his worst 3-drop. So, you know, there's there's room to trim. You can get Frilled Sandwalla in there. Also, um, equipment like Short Sword is always good in aggro decks. Um, I'm not sure if he considered that or if Mr. Ulip considered that, but... You know, there's there's a lot of different options for this archetype. So, congratulations once again to Edward for coming in fourth place. Um, he did lose to Jacob playing mono white aggro in the top four. So we saw we're we're starting to see a metagame developing. Uh, here, let's go back to Edwards. So we're starting to see a metagame developing where mono white is the best deck in the aggro mirrors. Um, you know, this, this green deck is a very solid aggro deck. Um, but it did lose to the mono white aggro deck. Uh, Edward beat blue-black control in round one, blue-black artificers in round two, and then lost to blue-black control in round three, and then lost to mono-white aggro in the um, top four. You know, so we saw, you know, this deck is better than the artificer deck at out-aggroing other aggro decks, um, but worse than Mono White at out aggroing other aggro decks. And then it has, you know, a, a fair matchup against Control. He beat one Control deck and then lost to a second. So, you know, uh, where the deck is in the metagame, that might give you some sort of idea. In third place, we had Jeffrey playing Blue Black Control. He was talking to me a whole bunch uh, leading up to this tournament, and he basically um, ended up somewhere very close to my build of Blue Black Control. If you want a more in depth look at this archetype, you can definitely check out our deck tech on this. Um, uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. But um, basically, uh, you know, he's very close. He's not playing Windgrace Acolyte. He's playing Horror of the Broken Lands instead. Um, he is playing the full four Omen Speakers. I think in our deck tech, we were playing zero Omen Speakers, but then um, in an update to that, I cut the Horror of the Broken Lands to play three Omen Speakers. Jeffrey here is playing four. He's only playing one Fungal Infection in the main. He's playing three Hieroglyphic Illuminations in the main instead of Dark Bargain. Um, the life loss from Dark Bargain was a real cost sometimes um, in the matches that Jeffrey played and in the end boss matches that I was um, playing. So, you know, it might be correct to play Hieroglyphic Illumination. The cycling is always great. Uh, but, you know, basically we see this deck is doing real great. Uh, the Wander and Death Salvager Secrets loop uh, means that the deck never runs out of card advantage in the late game. It just needs to make sure that it survives the early game, makes its land drops, takes over with a big giant creature, or just um, you know having a huge card advantage loop. So Jeffrey, uh, he let's see, he got a buy in round one. He beat um, Mono Green. No, he beat Mono Green in round three. He beat Jacob playing Mono White. In round two, he beat uh, Edward playing Mono Green in round three, and then lost to Sydney playing Blue Red Artificers in the top four. Um, Artificers does not have uh, that great of an aggro matchup, but it does have a really strong control matchup. Jeffrey, you know, he might have been able to play game three against Sydney a little bit differently to end up on top. It's it's not sure if um, you know some of the decisions that he made would have uh, made a big difference, but it was a very close match. So it's not like this deck automatically loses to Artificers, but it is definitely an unfavorable matchup. So um, in terms of where the metagame is, this deck just kind of stomps on the monocolored aggro decks and then struggles against uh, kind of the, the artificer decks that play a lot of equipment and, um, you know, um, the, the counter spell backup to support their early threat creatures. Uh, but congratulations to Jeffrey for coming in third place. Um, coming in second place, we had Sydney playing Blue Red Artificers. This... This deck um, is pretty close to the version of the deck that I put up on our channel, so I'll leave a link to our deck tech on that in the description. Um, but once again, Sydney, let's see, she lost in round one against... What did she lose to? Um, oh, I'm not sure who she played against. Let's, let's take a look at the photo... She lost in round one. 
Here we go. Uh, we have a picture from round one. All right, she lost in okay, so she lost in round one to Mono White. Uh, she ended up playing Jacob again in the finals and lost. So she lost to Mono White in round one, got a buy in round two, and then beat Jonas's uh, blue black artificers in round three, and then beat Jeffrey's blue black in top four, and then lost to Jacob again in the finals. So her only losses on the day were to Mono White aggro, um, which kind of. You know, is about what I would expect out of this deck, right? Mono White is really good at winning aggro mirrors. This deck is uh, sort of an aggro deck, but it uh, has the tools to kind of play a better long game against control. But of course, the cost of playing the long game against control means you're not as well suited for um, the aggro mirrors. So, you know, that's that's about what I would expect out of this deck. Um, it was it's not an unwinnable matchup, Mono White, but uh, I, I would say this deck is definitely not favored against Mono White. So we do have two more standard popper tournaments before rotation happens. Uh, almost all of this deck rotates out, unfortunately. So if you want to play Artificers, um, you've got two more opportunities to do it. So, but, you know, we will have a link to the full deck tech on this deck in the description. So check that out if this seems like your jam. And then, of course, here in first place, we had Jacob playing the tried and true mono white aggro archetype. The, of course, this is the deck that won our first scholarship tournament back in May. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these cards are going to be rotating out at rotation, so if you want to play Mono White Aggro um, in its current form, where it's playing some of the just hands-down best creatures in the format, uh, you've got two more opportunities to do it. Um, but uh, I, I'm not sure what the Mono White Aggro decks will look like post-rotation. There will st still probably be White Aggro decks, but they might not be Mono White, um, so we'll see. Sacred Cat, Fanbearer, Gustwalker... Um, Oketra's Avenger, Unwavering Initiate, and Talkrop Elite have kind of formed the backbone of the Mono White Aggro deck. And I, for their mana cost and for their impact on the board, uh, you don't get much more efficient creatures than that in the format. So Mono White Aggro, definitely just a real solid archetype. Um, does a really good job at winning aggro mirrors, right? It has lots of... Fanbearer can control their best threat. Sacred Cat can race the aggro decks, especially when you're putting short swords and cartouches on it. Um, let's see. Gustwalker can fly over other aggro decks. Oketra's Avenger can attack into other aggro decks. Um, you know, even if they play a blocker, Oketra's Avenger can attack very efficiently. Unwavering Initiate can uh, attack and block thanks to Vigilance, and you don't mind trading it off because you can embalm it later in the game. And then Talkrop Elite is really good at finishing off the game. So, you know, we've seen this creature patch package do very well. Jacob made some interesting uh, deck building choices here where he's not playing four ofs of all of these super powerful um, creatures from Amonkhet, but, uh, you know, it seemed to work out for him anyway. He's trying out some Anointed. Anointer Priests, which, uh, you know, they're they're solid. Um, not the most efficient creature, but they're pretty good at racing, especially because, you know, Sacred Cat makes tokens, Cartouche makes tokens, Unwavering Initiate makes tokens. It, it itself is a token. So, Anointer Priest is not bad. We've seen Mesa Unicorn or Bishop Soldier, um, which is also a 2-mana, two 2-2 two -two lifelink. Uh, both of these have been... We've seen them in main decks before in uh, Mono White Aggro. Um, so that's a fine choice. Pegasus Courser we haven't seen too much of. It came out in Dominaria, got reprinted in M19, but um, being able to give another creature flying when it attacks is a really powerful way to just kind of close out the game. Uh, get those last points of damage in. Um, blue black, or excuse me, blue green aggro was playing Aerial Glider, uh, which is a um, it, it's basically the same card. It's just a three mana two two, and it's blue. Um, so having a three mana one three um, flying. Uh, that gives another creature flying, really helps close out the game. So Pegasus Courser is a great choice. And then Territorial Hammer Skull, we've seen Mono White Aggro decks play this card before as well. Um, so some interesting choices that uh, I'm, you know, I would want to hear Jacob's opinion on how Revitalized did for him. When I saw him cast it, it didn't seem like it was making the most difference, um, being able to have the three life. So paying two mana to gain three life and get your card back, it's not the worst deal, but I think that because the white deck has so many other powerful options of what it can play, uh, I, I think that Revitalize is better served as just a, another spell, right? Um, getting, getting the four ofs here in... Uh, 
and some of the more powerful spells would be um, a priority to me. Uh, the other questionable inclusion here is Ornithopter. Uh, Jacob did get to do some cute things with Ornithopter over the course of the day, putting short swords or cartouches or his one of Knight's Pledge on it, and it you know it did some work. But I also saw him play Ornithopter a bunch of times where it just sat on the board and did nothing. Um, so Ornithopter, you know, it, it feels really good to be able to play a spell for free, but when that spell has very little impact on the board, um, it's kind of just like discarding a card. So I would recommend, since he is three cards over 60, I would recommend just cutting the Ornithopters. And then the last point of criticism that I'll make here is Evolving Wilds. In a monocolored deck, having the land come into play tapped is a pretty steep cost um, when Evolving Wilds is not fixing your mana. Um, so... Uh, in, in you know a two color deck or a three color deck, having the land come into play tapped, um, you know, is a fine price to pay if you're going to be fixing your mana. But since mono white um, does not need to fix its mana at all, having the land come into play tapped just to thin out your deck of lands is uh, it's it's not usually the best call. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that in the background, but there is a the hurricane warning is going off right now. Um, there is no school today, which is why I, I have the time to make this video, um, but. Sorry if uh, if you can hear the hurricane siren going off in the background. The, there is no hurricane yet, but uh, we are expecting it in the next day or so here in Hawaii. So uh, that is uh, our top four. We will have links to all of these decks in the description. Um, once again, congratulations to all of our top finishers. Here we go, top four. Um, Again, please uh, keep an eye out for our upcoming tournaments, September 8th, September 16th, and then uh, after Guilds of Ravnica comes out on October 21st. Um, and of course, shameless plug, if you enjoy what we do here on the channel, whether it's just creating standard proper content or creating youth opportunities and scholarship opportunities for the youth uh, uh, in the magic community here on Oahu, please consider becoming a patron subscriber. You can contribute as much or as little as you want. We have some really cool bonuses, and um, we will be giving away um, a playmat to our bronze or higher subscribers. Uh, I have the art finalized, and I will be sharing that with the community um, in the next couple of days, hopefully. I am uh, on a personal note, I uh, did start uh, full-time teaching. I'm teaching 10th grade language arts over at Nanakuli High School. I will be starting uh, the Magic Club over there at Nanakuli High School. So I've got a lot on my plate right now, so I'm a little behind on handling uh, the Patreon stuff. But don't worry, the project will go on. If you want to support the project, please consider becoming a Patreon. If we hit $400 a month, then we will for sure be able to run both of our scholarship tournaments this school year. So uh, thanks for stopping by. hope that this was helpful, and uh, I will catch you later. Peace.